because of this uh, GST journey and the pain that each organization is going through it is sometimes too much for me to bear. What are the reasons for these challenges and why we are kind of going through that? And the first point that we kind of always talk about, who is responsible for this pain? We ourselves are responsible for this pain. Nobody else. Did we not know that all these three data points, e-invoice, e-way bill, and GSTR1 are available? Were we not able to anticipate that this data will be required by the government? Yeah, the officers will ask for it. Did we not know that these are the types of notices will come in? Means I would say I would have lost my speech, I would have lost my voice many times, explaining the same thing again, again, and again. And still, the understanding, the mindset, that doesn't change. So if we have challenges, if we are flooded with notices, if we have not integrated our systems, if we are suffering in terms of reconciliation, if our master data is still bad, we are responsible for that. And we are not responsible only for the past. We are responsible for not taking any corrective measures for the future. Our responsibility is dual for. The second point I would like to say that is the short-term corrective measures or the short-term way of thinking or the method is the main reason of the challenges that we are facing today. If we would have thought about the long term, if we would have thought about how actually the things will pan out, or we did not look at it from the vision of the sales tax or the VAT or the excise service tax regime, and would have thought about actually how a digital tax would pan out, looking at maybe something that would have happened at Brazil, something that would have happened in Korea, we would have had a very different view. But our view was myopic, it was short term in nature, and even today, we are not looking at the long term challenges. Means, if I take the global multinationals and most of the Pune is global multinationals, the question is, we cannot touch our recipe. So, okay, don't touch your recipe. But does it mean that you will not be compliant? I am not able to get the answer out of it. So, the long-term vision or the long-term thought process which needs to come into play is still not coming in. This is the second challenge, I would say. The third challenge which comes in, we work in silos. The poor tax professional or the indirect tax professional has hardly any say. People don't want to listen to him. Now I think it's changing because of the substantial amount of notices coming in, because of the amount of notices which are of substance and needs to be reported to the board. That is why this has started changing. But how many areas does an indirect tax actually impact? It impacts finance, it impacts direct tax, it impacts AP, it impacts AR, it impacts treasury, it impacts legal. Now, if it is impacting all these areas, can it work in silos? Can it work into a small cubicle where they are supposed to just file the returns and be compliant? If we have to kind of need a manager's approval out in so many organizations, even one like an above PO or an order is signed by the managing director. At the same time, many crores of rupees of refund is not even being evaluated or talked about or codes of rupees being written off into your Kribi is not even being talked about. So this is a kind of a challenge which needs to be taken to the board groups, have a more discussion around it and kind of look at it that how you can actually make a difference in tools. Anil said talked about so many different tools. But what use of those tools if the mindset is not there to implement them? The decision making is not there. Silos working is that. What's the point of having all this tool? We always talk about cost hit. Every time there is a conversation, this is too expensive. The human labor would be cheaper, but the amount of data that you are carrying in Excel, which you are exposing out, and the amount of data that is there, which you do not even know what has happened five years back, is it worth it? If it is costly to be compliant, try being non-compliant. And that's the only thing we can say. But looking at it, GST as a cost hit or GST compliance mechanism a cost hit 
is a major challenge. Today, it is like our survey we have done. It. Average lifespan of an indirect tax professional in an organization is two and a half years. Just imagine the data and the knowledge that is being lost at every two and a half years. Knowledge being lost is still one part, but the amount of data that is getting lost into the process, we don't have answers to it. The next point I would like to highlight is this ethical consideration of this: how much amount of your data is in Excel, is in laptops, is flowing through emails, is going at a different places. Have you ever thought about it? And that data is being used by so many financial institutions to kind of finance, to give credit, to analyze different things. <coughs> it's a loss to you. And this is what it has happened. We have so much data with us. And uh, one point that most of the organization today are talking about is a data warehouse. Okay, we cannot do anything in our ERP. It is sacrosanct, it is the holy grail. We cannot touch it. But who stops you from creating a data warehouse in which all your data resides, by which at least you will have a single place to talk about it, you will have a single place from which you will be able to extract that information and maybe respond to the government. 80% of the notices are very simple of data in nature. That this is not matching to that and that is not matching to this. There is no other type of notices which are actually substance in nature. Hold on to it. In the next tsunami of notices that will come in, it will be a lot more in substance, lot in substance for law because now the notices are not going to come only for tech professionals. It is going to come in from tax and tax professionals combined together. So next tsunami of notices will be far, far more difficult. And today, when we are struggling even to respond to data, means 10 out of 10 companies are struggling to respond to data. How do we respond to all the tsunami of notices which are going to come to us? So it's very important, please break the silos create an environment where you are able to get the past data of which audits are pending, three years, four years, whatever that period may be. But this is important. Otherwise, everything we say, everything that we do, everything that we talk has zero value. We are now into the generation of AI. And computers or AI bots or AI LLMs, as we call it, are no more restricted only in terms of doing a job. They are now responsible and kind of very, very involved in creating multiple different responses for it. So when you are short of manpower, when you are kind of uh, lack in terms of how to do process automation or how to get maximum benefit out of it, Start using more digitization and AI into your business. It will actually help you to do much, much more. But if our AI strategy is myopic in nature, restricted to our ERP, restricted to a certain tools, then it is not going to benefit you in any way because you will have to think out of the box how AI will help you. Somebody has very rightly said that we are not going to lose jobs to AI. We are going to lose jobs or we'll lose business to people who understand and use AI better. So this is extremely critical that we start having an AI strategy at our organization. We talk about digital transformation and we talk about digital tax transformation. We are talking about a digital tax. There are only two certainties in uh, life, death and tax. And he rightly said the third certainty is notices. But one of the investors asked me in a flight that I are in business of tax. And my answer to him was, is tax going to die? His answer was, say, no. I said, we will die, but tax is not going to die. So I'm in a very good business. And rightly pointed out that, yeah, we are into a happy state. And I'm very happy, and he'll kind of say that there are 40 countries more in the next two years who are going to go invoicing way. So happy about it. But I am not that happy. Why? Because the people that we talk about to, the people that we kind of explain to him, 
are not willing to accept that the world in taxation is changing. I will give you a very simple example. We are talking about direct tax and indirect tax. As we speak, on government side, both have been already aligned. They have a single kind of a, a utility by which they are able to look at both the data together. Now they will come to you, state-wise balance sheet, reconcile your data with your income tax filing data, prove that this is the only turnover it is had. We have so much amount of email bill data, where all this turnover leakage has happened, prove that to us. They will come with all these questions. We are talking about convergence of direct and indirect tax. When we are struggling in terms of getting data points for our day-to-day -day compliance activities, how we are going to comply to those activities? Think about it. How much behind are we in terms of digitization, in terms of tax that we need to do? It's time that we look beyond digitization and it's kind of getting beyond digital. This is very, very important to think about it, how we do it. People like me, people like Anil will come in and say, we have so many tools, so many solutions, we'll solve you this problem, that problem. But where the mindset is going to come in? Are we ready for adapting anything? Are we ready for that change? Have we accepted in our hearts that tax has gone digital, it will go beyond digital, and these are the challenges that we actually need to work on. My team kind of came to me and said that, let's help people. Let's help organization. Let's create a playbook and share that playbook, how it will pan out, how they should adapt technology. We said we are willing to do workshops. We are willing to do daily workshops, two-day workshops, three-day workshops to help people understand that this is the way the taxation global is going in. This is how we want to come. We are not in demand only by the enterprises. We are more in demand today even by the tax authorities. Because they call us and they want to know from us how we can utilize the richness of data that we have for more benefit. Are you aware that B2C invoicing is coming in this year? So this is an area that we need to really figure out and work out how we are going to approach that. The playbook that we kind of always say that is have the functional requirements clearly in place. Normally we say, isko automate kar do, usko automate kar do. Don't go by that. Document what you want to automate and how actually it is going to help you in terms of automation. Whether that automation is of substance or is something a super salesman like me is coming and trying to sell to you. That is important to understand. Because there are two different areas, your ecosystem, your business, your style of functioning, your systems, how the automation is going to help. Not automating is an option, answer is very clear, not automating is not even an option. But you will have to find out the ways. How much amount of text that you have and have you thought about it? In my, I have taken multiple loans from the banks, maybe to buy a house maybe to run my business, maybe to buy a car. I know what my tax debt is. Do you really know what your tax debt is? Have you ever tried to scrutinize the notices which has come to you till date? Have you tried to do the assessment of your tax debt? And answer nine out of 10 times, it is no. Isn't it time to at least analyze what is going to come to our way? Is it too much of a cost? Is it too much of a pain? Not to analyze it. Yeah, the daily, daily notices, response is consuming so much amount of our time that we do not have even time to think about it in future. But Indians are very good at finance. And as an Indian, if I don't have a clue in terms of what my tax debt is, then only God can save me, nobody else can do that. So that is one area we should kind of look at it. The third point is, we are surrounded by data. And very recently, our team came up with a solution that all the ASP solution, the ASP data is, they apply a artificial intelligence to that data. We populated just the e-invoice data out of it and started getting insights. 
and we compare the net of tax insights with the sales data that is being provided to the CFOs or the CEOs of the company. Very interesting point of view. Those two data give a very different picture in terms of profitability, in terms of output. Should actually look at it. And one very interesting data point we have done that for a pharma company, that they were supplying loads and loads of free gifts to different areas into a different doctors. You have the data of what you are kind of selling into that particular area. Has those free gifts ever been analyzed to kind of look at it, what amount of data is going out of it? And when they saw the data, 50% of freebies were going without any productive output out of it. This is the reality of the world. So you have the data at the fingertips. We have the analytic tools at your fingertips. Today, AI helps you to analyze all this data. Have a process, have a playbook on how you are going to do that. The third part is alignment of managed services with tech. I talk about tech. Will it do everything that humans can do? Answer is blatantly no. Our tax, yeah, our tax is so, so complicated that so many parts of it cannot be kind of uh, integrated. In. We had a very interesting conversation when we met the uh, HNA team in Delhi to the, all the partners in HNA. And I said, like, what is your objective in business? That is what I was asked. And I told them very simply, I need my clients to be in a position they don't get any notice. I said, I want you to be out of business. Is it ever going to be possible? The answer is no. Because the complexity of the tax is so complex that no intelligence or no kind of a solution system or ERP will be able to tackle it. You need human intelligence and you need the managed services support to actually respond to it. I always say that if I'm sick today, I have a fever or I have symptoms today, should I go to doctor today or should I wait for 15 days or 10 days or 12 days for it to become so bad and then I am hospitalized? What approach should I take? The moment you realize that you have a challenge, get the right help and that will actually support you much, much more. Most important point that I would like to highlight, your data is sacrosanct. It is the holy gospel. It is your job to secure it. I am anti-Excel beyond the point. I hate Excels because what happens in Excels is nowhere in the system. There is no traceability. There is no kind of availability of what has been done onto it. And it's very, very difficult to kind of manage it. Go into data warehouse, go into systems, but it's extremely important. Application security, infra security, environmental security, all the security points are extremely important and select partners who are going to actually help you into those terms. This is a kind of a very interesting and a simple thing how we work at Signal. Today, all of these people mentioned that they were litigation management solution. How did we create it? The answer is very simple. We worked with the enterprise, we worked with large clients and actually took their help in terms of identifying how we should develop the litigation management model. We don't want to do it in rush. We don't want to kind of topify something that we have developed on our clients. We work with them to do that. I had a very interesting call today morning with one of the automobile, uh, large automobile manufacturers in Kuwait. The tax person was asking so pointed questions into such an area of peripheral challenges. And we were able to answer all of them except maybe one point where we said, this is a very interesting point for us. We will actually look at developing or bringing that into our solution. But such pointed questions out of the pain that he would have suffered in his last six, seven years of tax filing really helped us to get the solution. And this is where it makes a difference. But our Cosmos framework, we always talk about, let's have a discovery phase first, identify what your pain problems are there, then let's assess what your current situation is there. Take baby steps, identify the absolute assessment of the situation that is there, then we kind of transform the entire 
system, we work towards transforming. I can understand that you have limitations in terms of your SAP systems, global SAP systems cannot be touched. Very well, we will not touch them. But whatever file data which is coming out of it, at least that can be massaged, reconciled, verified with the SAP data that you have in your global system and work together to find a resolution and then evolve together. Because our feedback and the feedback that we get from the industry is just kind of creating the enterprise application that we have done. So this is very important that we have created a, I would say, a multi-layered enterprise text filing solution. And it is for you. Please do use it and take the maximum benefit out of it. But most important, and my entire presentation, and sometimes I come out to be very harsh in what I say, is but it's all about mindset. Do we really want to change? Do we feel that the change is necessary? Do we think that actually we need to make this change? Or we are just looking to the next appraisal or the next one year and kind of think not beyond it? I always say that. And we kind of have a very uh, good uh, saying in India. And very simply, I'll put it across. If you are working for an organization, it is our prerogative to ensure that its tax ecosystem is in safe hands. I would say we will never be 100% compliant, but at least we have managed the compliance to a level wherein we are risking the organization to bear me. This is the onus on us as a tax professional, and that is what we need to kind of look at. That's all from my side.